Hi, it's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter, and in this episode, I wanted to show you a couple of projects that I've been working on. First project I did today, and it took me probably a couple of hours to do, and I made a cover for a binder, a quilted cover. Now, I didn't follow a um, set of, or a pattern or anything like that. I kind of made it up as I went along, and in it, I'm going to be keeping a lot of my quilt-related things, uh, like my patterns and information and things like that. So I just took a long piece of my own material and this is fabric that uh, I designed it myself and I uh, had printed, you'll see the back of it too, printed by Spoonflower. I got a couple of yards of this. Um, this measured about 33 inches by 12 inches um, and as I said I made it up as I went along. So I had to fold over and uh, sew these little flaps here. So this binder will come out. This will fit on another binder the same size of this. But the one thing I didn't take into consideration, and this is why I was an idiot, was this top edge. I should have made this, I made it exactly 12 inches, the same width as the binder. What I should have done was probably made it maybe 13 inches. So I'd have an inch on either side that I could have rolled, folded it over and bound so that my edges wouldn't fray. Didn't think of that until after I got the ends done and had it already cut out. So what I did was I zigzagged very close to the edge all the way around, except that I did put this on top of a piece of batting. And so I measured the batting so it would fit right inside the cover. You can't see the batting on here right now, but it's underneath. Um, I didn't put a backing on it. I just put the batting and I only made it as big as up to the edges of the internal flaps. So in other words, there's no batting under the flaps. I probably could have put batting under the flaps though, but at the time I thought it might not allow me to slip the cover of the binder into it very well. So to hold the batting together, uh, sort of like basting it, um, I did a, a narrow zigzag stitch around the edges and that held down the batting. Um, I also used a spray adhesive on it as well. And then I quilted it, and I don't know if you can see my quilting. I just did a simple wave line um, vertically uh, using the walking foot. So it works. Um, if I was to make another one of these, I would definitely make it a little bit wider so I could have a nice finished edge and not have to worry about doing any kind of zigzag stitching or anything like that. Like I said, I did that in about two hours. Um, I don't like following patterns for some reason. I like making it up as I go, but that's the idiot part of it all because when you make it up as you go, you run into things that you didn't think of at first. Well, that's my first one. I learned from that. My next one that I make, I will not make those same mistakes. I'll probably make other mistakes, but I won't make those same mistakes. The other thing I'm working on is something I saw someone on YouTube doing to use up their scraps, and especially their little scraps, and they're doing a crumb quilt. And the way you make that is just you take all your little pieces and sew them together. And you don't worry about uh, squaring it up. You just get them to whatever size you want. And here's some of them. Now these I have squared up. So what I have here are six and a half inch squares and they're made up of just leftover pieces of fabric. Okay, so another idiot move, I got a phone call. So that's why I had to stop the video. So what was, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, crumb uh, squares. Um, so you can see, and I, I'm not really paying much attention to the way they go on or whatnot, and then I just squared them up and they'll be six and a half inches. Now, I'm going to make more of these. I haven't got that many. I think I've got about six made right now. And then I'm going to lay them out and see what they look like as a quilt. Now I might make them into half square triangle things, do that, or with maybe a plain color, or I might do some sashing in between and just let them do what they will do. I don't know, but I think it'll make it quite kind of an interesting quilt and it's a way to get rid of all of your little bits and pieces as well. And I find it kind of relaxing because you're really not thinking about following a pattern, you're just sewing and cutting. That's it. So anyways, that's uh, today's Idiot Quilter. So I hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you for the next one. Bye bye for now.